Trust levels are at an all-time low, but there is one institution that is seeing an emergence of trust. In the 2019 Edelman Trust Barometer, the employer is now the most trusted institution. That's right, 75% of respondents trust my employer, which is 19 points more than business in general and 27 points more than government. What a prime opportunity for organizations to leverage this trust to further engage their employees and grow their business. And in this video, I'm going to give you some tips on how you can do just that by leading from the heart. Welcome back, I'm Samantha McGorick and you are watching the No WTA Show, where I help board members and executives like yourself know what to ask and when to act so that you can lead from your heart and put people first by leading safe and healthy work. So make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit that bell so you don't miss out on future videos. And stick around to the end of this video because I'm gonna let you know how you can get your hands on the second annual Director Health and Safety Dashboard that covers critical health and safety issues from 2018 that should be on every director's radar in 2019. If you've been living under a rock and haven't heard of the Edelman Trust Barometer, it's a trust and credibility survey that goes across 27 global markets and covers upwards of 33,000 respondents. The barometer gets a lot of attention because it's a great indicator of which institutions and individual roles in those institutions need to pick up their game. But conversely, it's also an opportunity for others to shine and leverage that trust as a strategic advantage. Because as Covey has said, trust levels should not be mistaken as simply soft social virtue. Rather, he suggests it is a hard economic driver for every organization. He suggests that some of the consequences of low trust environments are low morale, disengagement, and a lack of commitment. You'll also see people manipulating and distorting facts and withholding information. There will be resistance to new ideas, bad-mouthing, gossiping, finger-pointing, over-promising, under-delivering, and often tension and fear. Everything will take longer to do, and everything will cost more. If there are low trust levels amongst employees, it will limit your company's traction in achieving its safety initiatives and implementing change. It will prevent the full implementation of your safety management system and cloud your understanding of how well the business is doing at managing its health and safety risks because people won't report incidents or issues because they don't trust that anything will be done with that information. This will be exacerbated if you have low trust levels between the board and executive because the executive will tell the board what they want them to hear, not what they should hear. So as a director, here are three things you could do personally to build a foundation of trust and confidence with the people you work with. Number one, focus on your circle of influence. Now I've put this one first for a reason, because in order to do the next two, you need to be aware of your circle of influence. And that is where you have the greatest impact. If you start with building trust amongst your director peers and with the executive team, you will have a greater chance of influencing trust throughout the organization because people will take your lead. The phrase circle of influence was coined by Covey and it means that people are working on the things that they can do something about. He refers to these people as proactive people where the nature of their energy is positive, enlarging, magnifying, causing their circle of influence to increase. Conversely, those who are reactive work in their circle of concern. They focus on circumstances of which they have no control. The negative energy generated by that focus, combined with the neglect in areas that they could be doing something about, causes their circle of influence to shrink. So if you're focusing on how to influence behavior on the shop floor, you're going to get a bit frustrated and no doubt that's not new to you because it is frustrating as a director who is so many steps removed from day-to-day decision-making. So that's the first point. Focus on what you can do personally in the boardroom to build trust, and sooner or later that trust will expand into the rest of the business because your circle of influence will expand. Number two, lead by example. We can link this back to the circle of influence because those who are proactive lend themselves more to being leaders rather than those who are reactive. Leading from your heart in the boardroom, and in general, can be lonely because heartfelt leadership is traditionally seen as a weakness, but nothing changes if nothing changes. So if you want to influence trust in the boardroom, amongst your peers, 
but particularly with the executive, you may need to step outside of the normal behavior in your boardroom and lead by example. For some of you, it may require creating new habits that demonstrate your trustworthiness. And some of you may already be demonstrating these habits, just not in the boardroom. So what are these habits? That's number three. Number three, demonstrate ability, benevolence, and integrity, ABI. Although these variables are not trust per se, research has suggested that they help build the foundation for the development of trust. So in terms of ability, look to build your competence in leading safe and healthy work in the boardroom. That is, have a good understanding of health and safety concepts, language, and the risks in your industry and business so that you know what to ask and when to act. By doing so, you'll increase your credibility with your peers and the executive, and most definitely your safety manager as a result. This will give you the confidence and ability to ask more targeted questions, and those tasked with responding will have greater trust in your ability to have a more valuable conversation that would likely open itself up to more insights and information that you may not have received or been privy to previously. So how can you demonstrate benevolence? Well, research suggests this looks like loyalty, openness, receptivity, and caring. One way you can show your executive that you care, and I talked about this in a previous video, and I'll provide a link in the show description below this video, but check in with your executive on how their mental health is going. Again, work within your circle of influence and know that there have been a number of CEO suicides in the last 10 years due to stress, anxiety, and depression. So this shouldn't be a foreign concept to ask your CEO about their mental health. Now you can also watch for signs of their physical health, like fatigue or muscular strains they're experiencing because they're likely working long hours, right? Sometimes that could be at home in very, with a very awkward setup. And over time, that's going to show in their posture or other signs of pain that they may be experiencing. The result we're looking for here is that the executive sees that you care enough to ask. And that signals to them that they can trust that you want to hear the answer. It will also give them the support to do the same with their team and so on and so on. It moves through the business just by working within your circle of influence. You end up building employee trust for their own, for their manager. And finally, you want to be able to demonstrate integrity. And that looks like being fair, reliable, consistent, delivering on your promises and being honest. One way you can act with integrity is to actively and consistently prioritize safety and well-being to demonstrate it's a priority to you or a non-negotiable. For example, ask management to demonstrate that they have considered the safety implications from the strategic changes they're requesting the board's approval on. Consistently asking management in this way will trigger them to consider these implications in the future when presenting proposals. Again, this is how you are leading by example in your circle of influence. And the executive will take your cue that it's a priority and that will influence how they behave going forward because they'll make sure you're prepared. They're prepared to give you this information in the future. So let's do a quick recap for you to personally build a foundation of trust and confidence with the people you work with. Start with where you have the most influence and that's in the boardroom with your peers and the executive. Know that heartfelt leadership may mean that you need to lead by example, but remember nothing changes if nothing changes. And finally, demonstrate ability, integrity, and benevolence, ABI, by improving your skills, showing the executive you care and being consistent in demonstrating that safety is a priority. Now, in light of today's topic on leading from the heart, don't forget that I do have a quiz for you that will help you discover your personal boardroom leadership style in less than two minutes, where you'll see whether your leadership style is well in the boardroom is well aligned to leading from the heart. I've provided a link to the quiz in the description below this video. And finally, if you have found this topic interesting, check out this year's director health and safety dashboard. It covers critical issues from 2018, such as the lowering of global trust levels, across business, government, and regulatory landscapes that should be on every director's radar in 2019. To get your hands on a copy, check out the link in the description below this video. One of the foundational principles of leading safe and healthy work is sharing knowledge across business, industry, and borders. So in the context of sharing, let this community know in the comments below. 
What is one thing that has resonated the most with you from this video? Or what are some other tips that you can give this audience for developing trust in the boardroom? As always, I hope this has helped you in your quest to know what to ask and when to act. And if you like this video, do let me know by clicking the thumbs up icon below. If you want more videos like this, make sure you subscribe to the show and hit the bell if you want to be notified when I post a new video. More importantly, if you think that others would find similar value from this content, you would be doing them a disservice if you didn't share it with them. If you want more great insights into what to ask and when to act, come on over to samanthamagalric.com and sign up to get email updates and you'll get instant access to that 2019 Director Health and Safety Dashboard. Be brave and stay true to your commitment to lead from your heart by putting people first and I am confident you will reap the rewards. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time on the No WTA Show.